Though we've done the basic recycler view implementation, the next step is to add photos. This is going to be pretty straightforward. We're going to use a service called pixum.photos, which is a website which allows you to easily get placeholder images. So in order to get a square image, which is what we want, we want to have each contact have a square image associated with it. You can use pixum.photos slash and you give it the size. So we want pictures of size 150. And you can see that it gives you back a random image. And the other cool thing is that you can actually pass in a parameter. So for example, if you say random equal one, this will give you back one image. And then if we do the same thing with 42, it'll give us back another image. With this information, let's augment our contact data class to include an image URL pointing to pixum.photos. Let's open up Android Studio, open up the contact data class, and we're going to add in one more attribute called image URL. And this will be pixum.photos slash 150, and we want to pass in a random number here. And we can actually just use the age field that we already have. The next thing we'll need is to add in the internet permission to our project because we're going to be downloading these images from the internet. So open up the Android manifest file and right before the application tag, let's add in a user's permission and just type internet. Now let's update our item contact XML, which represents one row of our recycler view to include an image view. So I'll drag these text views over to the side and let's drag in an image view. So Android Studio is going to ask you what kind of sample data do you want? And usually I'll just go with avatars. And what we want here is to change the constraints of these text views to be to the left of the image view. So both of these should be to the left. And let's make the margins here like eight pixels to the left of the image view. They should still be aligned. Next, we need to add some constraints on the image view here. So we'll make it zero pixels from the top and to the left. And let's actually hard code in the width and height just because we know what size image we're getting. I'll make it 120 dp for the width and height. And then we should also update the ID. We'll call it IV profile. And so one cool thing we can do actually is we call this layout item contact. If we wanted to see what this might look like in the overall view, there's a attribute in the tools namespace. This is a preview functionality you can kind of see what things might look like if I start referencing item contact. So Android unfortunately doesn't have an inbuilt way to fetch and show remote images. And so to make that our life easier, we're going to use a library called Glide. So if you just search for Glide Android Code Bath, the first hit should be this article displaying images with the Glide library. And so just copy and paste these lines and we're going to put it into the build.cradle file, which is located in the app module. Then you can tap sync now. And what sync now is doing is it's actually going to download the contents of these libraries so we can start to reference these. Now let's open up the adapter. And the adapter is where we are showing the logic for each row in our recycler view. So this is where we're going to be modifying the code in order to actually show the image. So we'll say item view and we'll pass in the ID of our image view. So we call it called IV profile. And we need to use glide now in order to load an image into this image view. The way that works is we'll say glide dot with and we pass in a context. And this context is coming from the constructor of our contact adapter. And we'll load in the remote image URL. And so that will be an attribute on, on our data class contact. So we'll say contact dot image URL we're going to put it into an image view, and that's what iw.iv profile is. Okay, so let's try that out. If we run the app and we open up the emulator, we should now hopefully see images. One thing that you might encounter is that initially when you run the app, you don't actually see images. Sometimes that happens because your emulator is in a bad state. So uninstall the app from the emulator and then reinstall it just by running the app again and that should fix it. You can see how we're getting different images for each person, each contact in our recycler view. Now that we're done with the full implementation of our recycler view, I said at the beginning that we could implement this in fewer than 50 lines of code. Let's see how we did. Contactadapter.kotlin is where we have the bulk of the logic and that has 24 lines of code. Contact dot kotlin which is a data class has only three lines of code 
And the final Kotlin class is main activity, and this has 15 lines of code. So that gives us a grand total of 42 lines of code, much less than the 50 lines. And we could actually condense this even more if we wanted to be stingy. One more thing we can do, which will be really helpful to gain a conceptual understanding of the benefit of RecyclerView, is to understand when the methods of the adapter are actually being called. So you'll recall that the onCreateViewHolder method, which is actually doing the layout inflation, this is expensive. On the other hand, on bind view holder, which already has a view holder passed into it and it's simply binding data to it, this is not expensive. So to test that assumption, one thing we can do is actually log out something for each of these methods. I'm going to add a tag. And so what we can do is say log dot i and say the tag, and then let's log on create view holder, just so we know when this method is being called. And then when we get to the on bind view holder, let's write that down. And we'll also indicate the position. Now, if we run this and let's open up our log cat. So we only care about contact adapter, that tag. So let's see what's happening. So right now we've rendered the initial screen. And so you can see that we have called on create view holder, on bind view holder, on create view holder in that pattern. And that makes sense because we're creating a view holder and then immediately binding data to it. And we're doing that for each of the positions that are visible on the screen. So zero, one, two, three, four, and there's one more that's barely visible that we're also creating and binding the view holder for. What we'd expect if the recycler view is doing its job is that as we scroll, we should not see on create view holder being called as much, but we should be seeing on bind view holder. So let's test that assumption. So you can see I scroll down a little bit and we saw a few more on create view holders being called. But now at this point, we're pretty much never seeing it called again. So if we keep scrolling, you can see that we're binding data at different positions, but on create view holder is not there at all. And now if I start scrolling back up, you can see the positions that we're binding at are going back to previous indices, but still we're never calling on create view holder. And that's a really good sign. That means that really we're only creating these view holders at the beginning, only when needed. And as the user is scrolling, we're doing a much less expensive operation to bind data rather than create views. That's all I had in terms of code. I had three ideas for easy extensions you could do, which could even further deepen your understanding of recycler view. First, you could animate items as they enter onto the screen. Second, you could change the layout manager from linear layout manager to grid layout manager. And finally, you could add a placeholder image while images are being loaded onto the screen. Each of these should be fewer than 10 lines of code. And I'll leave links to code path guides which walk through each of these in the description. I hope you enjoyed that video walkthrough. Let me know if you have any questions or if you've done all these extensions, drop a comment with a link to your GitHub profile. And I'd love to check out what all of you have built. See you next time.